Hi everyone, it's Nadine here, your National GMB Officer in ASDA. Last week, Hayley Tatum, ASDA's Chief People Officer, and Mossin Issa, ASDA's co-owner, appeared in front of the Business and Trade Committee in Parliament. ASDA were quizzed by MPs about their use of fire and rehire to impose pay cuts on low-paid re retail workers in the South East. And can I just remind you, on the 28th of June, Mr Comerford wrote to us to clarify that ASDA's last resort position, as he described it, if ASDA can't reach an agreement, it may seek to dismiss and re-engage colleagues on new terms and conditions. Is that correct? This is a live consultation. and I can no, 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 I didn't ask you that. that I, I'm asking you about Mr Cla Comerford writing to us, and he gave us that clarification that the dismissing or re-engaging any ASDA employee on new terms and conditions um, uh, it will only apply in the, as a last resort. Is that the position, yes or no? Our position is to get to an amicable agreement with, with our negotiation. I'm simply asking you, straightforwardly, have you, is that part of your armoury to dismiss people and re-engage them on less favourable terms? And I'm trying to get a yes or a no from either Mr Isa or from you. Yes or no? I'm not playing any tactics with you. Just I'm tell sorry, me yes or no. We are working through this with our GMB partners, who some will be in this room today, and they can clarify. Well, you see, we that's the point. The you see, it is, in, it is in the current consultation document, is it not? All options are in the consultation document. Is that option in... in not all options... Oh. It's like drawing teeth talking to this company. Why will you not answer a very straightforward question and then we can make progress? And, and they were asked to clarify what the £1.7 billion gap in their latest accounts was for. When I looked at the um, operating costs for ASDA, um, so the amount you're allowed to take away from the revenue you make before tax calculations, I saw that you had operating costs at ASDA of around 24 um, billion pounds. But when I looked at the breakdown of those operating costs, there seemed to be a gap of about 1.7 billion. Uh, have I missed something? Where is that 1.7 billion gone, do you think? I'm not privy to them details, unfortunately. You're not? Okay. Um, let me try to explain a bit further. So Bellis Finco PLC, which is the company that owns Asda, is itself owned by uh, Bellis Acquisition Company PLC, Bellis Acquisition Company 2 Limited and Bellis Acquisition Company 3 Limited. Have I got that structure right? I mean, I'm not really into the detail of the actual structures, but it sounds right. OK, because when I looked at the accounts for Bellis Acquisition Company PLC, the ultimate owner of Asda, there seemed to be a dividend of £1.7 billion, which looked pretty much like the £1.7 billion I couldn't find in the operating costs in the Asda accounts. Is there any connection between the two? The £1.7 billion, pounds, I can't recollect what that relates to. Darren Jones MP, the chair of the committee, accused ASDA of wasting MPs' time and failing to answer their questions. He said the hearing had been extraordinary, but for all the wrong reasons. Might I say that this has been quite an extraordinary session, not in the way that I hoped it would have been. What we've heard today is that prices are up at ASDA, tax is down, pay is down, money is being taken through a very complicated set of business structures onto offshore companies, and you've not answered any of our questions. I'm just very sorry that we've spent an hour going around in circles and you've not been complying with the questions from this committee. It's not in order, and I think actually you've suffered to the detriment for the brand of ASDA to your customers um, and to your suppliers, and I'm just sorry that we're in this position. Ian Lavery MP told ASDA they were experts in the use of fire and rehire after they deployed the threat in the current consultation and after firing colleagues during the your contract dispute. Can I just ask a question? You're obviously a, a bit of an expert in fire and rehire or dismiss and rehire. Um, because, you know, like as, as Mr MacDonald already said that you were part of the contract six consultations uh, and I, I think you will certainly part of that. You've said you were anyway. Um, so you're a bit of an expert in this and, and you understand exactly how it works. Can I ask you a really simple question? If people aren't prepared to accept 
uh, the, the final of us would they lose their jobs? Not in that place yet. Pardon me, sorry? We are not in that place yet. I'm not saying you are, I'm saying, um, um, you know, like when you were leading the negotiations the last time, you actually, people lost their jobs. 205 people. 235 people lost their jobs. What a threat that must be, by the way. The hearing was a stark reminder that no employer is above being held accountable for their actions and that attacking low paid retail workers, while legal, is certainly not morally acceptable. Can I just finish by asking on fire and rehire, why are you willing to say dismiss and re-engage but not fire and rehire? They mean exactly the same thing. As I said, I'm sorry that I'm using different terms. I don't yeah, But why? Be, because I'm using the terms that are the, the professional... The, ACAS the refers chartered, to it as fire and rehire. The Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development call it dismiss and re-engage. Right. I follow their policy in terms of making sure that through our consultation, mm. because it is an option, not the only option, that we make sure that all of those pr processes and policies are followed. I understand. The, just, just for future reference, the dictionary definition of fire says to dismiss, and the dictionary definition of hire says to engage. So you can be confident in saying, Ms Tatum, that ASDA is using fire and rehire tactics, ASDA. 